So we're all aware of the current uh, topics that are being discussed. And, uh, well, YouTube tends to censor uh, certain words. So we have to be quite careful, especially these days, about using certain particular ist and ism words. And so we shall. Big Think has a video, and the video is entitled Eight Powerful Speakers That Might Make You Think Differently About Ism. And th this is full of, uh, I, I think it's a cornucopia of the same sort of leftist, Marxist thinking about the ist-ism problem. And especially egregious and insufferable, in the hamster's opinion, is uh, the white female author, uh, you know, activist, whatever, Dr. Robin D'Angelo. She has a book called white fragility do uh do, do you see where she might be coming from i think you do it, it's hard to get through especially her her parts are just my god <laughs> i will put the link to it below so you can watch it for yourself bring popcorn it's 23 minutes long anyway and we're getting one perspective one side of the discussion of course. Now, Big Think occasionally does have different points of view, even in the same video, at the same time, but not this time. These are probably some of the most radicalists and ism activists that, uh, that I've run into. Anyway, there's a man here. His name is Clint Smith. And Clint is a, an extremely successful man, very well-educated, brought up well, went to great schools, great college, Harvard now to get a PhD. So, I mean, this guy is no slouch. He's a very, very smart dude, without question. But he's a black dude. Somehow, Mr. Smith believes he is still being oppressed. Systemic ism. So, I'm just going to cut out a little piece here because he he's, takes up about 10 minutes of the video. And, uh, you know, other a 10-minute response video would turn into about a 40-minute video. And, wow. I think we're going to get uh, pretty much the entire uh, gist of it by listening to a little bit. So, this is at the 2029 mark. Let's hit it, Mr. Smith. You know, my mother and my father had ongoing conversations with me throughout my childhood. Uh, do, do you sense the privilege yet? Did you catch the privilege? Did you? Let's listen to it again. See if you can find the privilege in the words spoken by... Mr. Smith. You know, my mother and my father had ongoing conversations with me throughout my childhood. So, Mr. Smith, you would be one of the 30% of black children who are born to a married couple. 30%, meaning 70% of black children in the United States are born out of wedlock and likely to a single mother. But, but you don't consider that to be a privilege, do you? Oh, no, no, no. Now, having two parents in the house, well, that's a privilege. And my adolescence and my teenage years, and even now as a young adult. And what did these conversations uh, have to do with? Don't do certain things when you're a teen, and you'll probably succeed in this evil ist society. Is that about, uh, ab about the sum of the conversations? W would that be about right? About understanding the way that I was seen, even if I wasn't able to see that myself. Yes, making sure that uh, you knew because of the color of your skin you would be oppressed. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that came later because your parents, as we will find out shortly, were not oppressed. Neither were you. You were actually born with a silver spoon in your mouth, young man. To recognize that like when I went out with a group of my white friends... Or Excuse me, were your white friends ist? Because after all, the... the Dr. D'Angelo claims that when white people say, well, I'm not ist because I have people of color who are friends and we hang out together and we do things together. Uh, no, that means you are an ist. Because somehow, apparently, to, according to the doctor, the only thing I can get out of what she said was somehow people of color are forced to be uh, acquaintances and hang out with white people because of ism something. When I... Um, if I'm in an interracial relationship or if I um, am engaged in certain activities that those things are perceived differently because I am a black man. What, 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 what sorts of activities would you be referring to, Mr. Smith? 
you, you'd be treated differently if you were hanging out in the park with your white friends because you're black. Or it would be, uh, who knows what it might be. What activities are we talking about? Uh, hmm. That... Um, that is never mentioned. And that the, the United States and, and the world has a certain sort of uh, stereotype or caricature of, of who they believe black men to be. Um, there, there can be a bit, a shred of, of truth in a stereotype. And that there are people judging me before I ever open my mouth. Judging, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's try to break that down, Mr. Smith. So people are looking at you and saying, okay, there's a black guy. And they're making a judgment based upon the color of your skin, which is ism, right? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it, I think, obviously the best. Judge a person based on their character. So people, some people are looking at you and they're saying, well, this guy is black. So I have a preconceived notion of what this man is all about. There's some kind of built-in, inherent, <laughs> original sin in our DNA, as white people, we look and, well, black guy, well, you know, <laughs> right? Is that kind of what you're getting at? However, Mr. Smith, when you look at all white men and you say all white men are ist and you actually believe that, are you not judging me based on my skin color? Without knowing me, without talking to me, without engaging with me, you're saying you are an ist. But I guess it doesn't work the uh, other way. If someone does it to you, it is an ist. If you do it to me, it is your perceived reality. And there's no ism involved in that, right? Because ism cannot go from the oppressed to the oppressors. Am I getting my Marxist talking points correct? Right, that there are people who have, who have decided who I am before I've ever had an opportunity to, to show them or to engage with them. Yes, that's exactly my point. So you have determined that I am an ist without talking to me, without engaging with me, without even introducing yourself to me. I am thus. You don't like it when it's done to you. Why should I like it when it's done to me? Based upon superficial things we do not control. But somehow it's acceptable when it goes at me. Hmm. Yes, I guess so. Um, and that this exists in every sort of uh, realm of, of class. Yeah, it's a class thing, probably. Yeah, sure. And, and I think that was an important thing for my parents to teach me as well, is that... Mm, there we go. The privilege of having two parents. <laughs> okay. Tell us again how you're oppressed, please. We would like to know. You know, I come from a home uh, of two parents with professional degrees and... And mm -hmm. so two professional degrees, likely a pretty big income, likely a pretty good neighborhood. You probably didn't grow up in the hood. Would that be a fair statement? You went to a sort of exclusive elementary school in New Orleans. And then after that, you went to a private high school in Texas. After that, you enrolled in Davidson College, very exclusive. And then now Harvard. Uh, tell me again the oppression that uh, you somehow, uh, you're down with the struggle with other people who haven't had your privilege. <laughs> Just curious. I, I attend Harvard University where I'm getting my doctorate. And I think a lot of people can operate under this assumption. They'll say, oh, Clint, you, know, you, you made it. You've transcended you know, racism and you move beyond these like, pr oppressive forces and obstacles that have sought to keep you down. And he didn't transcend the obstacles put in his way because there were none. You understand that? There were no obstacles in the way of this man achieving what he has achieved. And he's done great achievements. There's no question. Nothing was in his way. So no, his statement is correct. No, I didn't transcend all of this is stuff and all of these obstacles because I never had them to overcome. So he's not lying. And the reality is that that's not true. <laughs> of course Oh my God, I'm oppressed even though I've got a PhD from Harvard and I went and my parents are fairly well off and I grew up in a great neighborhood and nothing ever ist happened to me when I was growing up and there was no obstacles put in my way to be the achiever that I am today. And yet, he's still oppressed. The reality is that I still get followed around in stores. Is, is this an exclusively black phenomenon? Of course it is in your mind, Mr. Smith, because you don't see it happening to anyone else because 
that would go against your narrative, see? So you have to ignore that. So if white people, black people, brown people, red people, any people get looked at askance with a stink eye when you're in the store getting whatever you're getting, it's probably because the owner or the person running the store doesn't want shit to be stolen. It happens to every people. But again, you can't see that. You mustn't. You force yourself not to. Because that would take away from the narrative. Wearing my Harvard paraphernalia, the reality is that I still can't catch a cab on Massachusetts Avenue. Now, I don't know how difficult it is to catch a cab on Massachusetts Avenue. I don't even know where that is. Is it in Harvard or wherever that is? Now, if you would give me an example, maybe I was standing there with three white people. And cabs would come up and they would go right where the white people were. And I couldn't get a cab because I'm a black guy. Well, that would be ism, wouldn't it? That would, that would not be right. However, you don't even give an anecdote. You give nothing. It's, wow, well, I can have a hard time catching a cab on Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, maybe everyone does, Mr. Smith. You're not giving us enough of the story to make a determination. What you're trying to imply is because I am black. I cannot get a cab on Massachusetts Avenue. We have no evidence. We don't even have a friggin' anecdote to support that point of view. Thus, it is dismissed. The reality is that uh, there are people who, you know, white women will, will cross the street um, when walking towards me on the sidewalk at, at nighttime. And those things, it doesn't matter where I wear my pants. It doesn't matter, you know, how well I speak. So women uh, see a strange man, they're walking on the sidewalk, they feel uncomfortable. Because another one of the isms has told all women they need to fear all men. All the time, constantly, 24-7, 365, because we live in a grapefruit culture. So if a woman sees a man approaching, she doesn't know who the guy is. Doesn't matter what color of skin he has or what he's wearing. She is fearful because the other ism has instilled that into her brain. So naturally, she's probably going to walk across the street and continue on the other side because she doesn't want to be, um, hmm, you, you think, I think you know what I'm, what I'm, what I am saying. It's not because you're black. It's because you're a strange man. That's it. Now, you don't want to see that it, the same thing happens to people who are not black because, again, that would go against your narrative. And we certainly can't have that because that would be a cognitive dissonance, a pain in your brain. How do you, how do you figure that one out? Well, we just ignore that. It's easier. Or how smart I am or, you know, what my house looks like. Nobody, no, no, nobody could possibly tell, Mr. Smith, how smart you are what your house looks like, uh, what your intentions are, how educated you are, how, how much money you... Nobody can tell if you're a stranger walking down the friggin' street at night. How are you supposed to know that? The implication here being because he is black, it is assumed he's going to be some kind of thug or criminal. That would be rather race... That would be rather ist now, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it, Mr. Smith? Why are you being an ist? Assuming a man walking down the street because he's black is some kind of thug. That doesn't sound very progressive to me, Mr. Smith. Uh, hmm. Because I'm a black man. No, it's not because you're a black man. It's because you're a dude that she doesn't know. It happens to everyone. Dude, my goodness. And, and that is the first thing people see. It would be, yeah. There's a man walking down the street. What's he look like? Ah, oh, he's a black dude, you know, 6'5", whatever. Or he's a white dude, about 5'10", kind of fat. Yes, it's the first thing people notice. What, 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 what am I supposed to do? Well, I know he's black, but I bet he's a Harvard-educated PhD. Went to Davidson College. How, how would you know that if you don't know the person? How? Identifying someone as having a particular skin color does not mean you're judging them for that. That would be ism. Do you understand? You're not making sense at this point. And that is it immediately for them triggers uh, the implicit biases that, that they've been socialized to believe about who we are and, and what we do or do not do. So you, you'll notice that as of late, the new new is implicit, internal, DNA, the spirit, what's going on inside the person's head. You can't prove that, can you? No, there's no way you can tell what somebody's thinking. And if you start calling all of these isms internal, in internalized, uh, X, Y, Z, that makes it almost like a religion now, doesn't it? 
something you can't see, something you can't prove, something that's scientifically unverifiable. It's implicit. I'm not really shocked that we went from actual, external, visible, tangible ism to it's all in your head. One is easy to prove and rarely happens. The other impossible to prove. That's simple. Because you have a particular color of skin, you are an ist. Unfreaking believable. I will put the link below. Remember, judge a man not based on the color of his skin, but on the content of his character, except if that man is white. Then we all know what that's all about, don't we? James Maxwell, thank you for listening.